Deep in the jungles of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula stands the ancient Mayan city of Uxmal, renowned for its stunning pyramids and architecture. Yet the legends of Uxmal's origins are less widely known. These fascinating tales tell of witchcraft, dwarf kings, and serpents intertwined with the city's history. You won't believe the captivating myths explaining how Uxmal came to be. These rich stories reveal the Maya's cosmology and worldview, from a sorceress hatching a future king to a magical pyramid raised overnight. What deeper meanings and cultural beliefs might be encoded in the origin legends of Uxmal? Uxmal was one of the great Mayan city-states, flourishing from around 700 to 1000 CE. Local legends say it was founded by Hun Uitzil Chak Tutul Shu, a ruler mythically born from a magical union of the gods. As the story goes, there lived a sorceress who was unable to have children. One day, she received a divine message from the gods saying that a baby would come in an egg found in a cave near Ushmal. The next morning, the woman excitedly ran into the jungle and found the cave with the egg inside. She took the egg and following the gods' instructions, cooked it next to a fire. When the egg cooled, it cracked open and a human baby emerged. The sorceress baptized the boy with the name Tutul Shu. Tutul Shu grew very fast at first, but then stopped growing, remaining a dwarf. However, dwarves possess great knowledge and intelligence for predicting the future, and Tutul Shu became a powerful wizard. He began watching his adoptive witch mother closely, curious why she never let anyone near her cooking fire. He asked her, why? But the woman never responded. One day when she went for water, Tutul Shu stayed home alone. He put out the fire and found a pre-Hispanic drum called Atun Kul. According to legend, whoever first played the Tun Kul in Ushmal would become its next king. Tutul Shu began playing it, the sound echoing through the jungle to Ushmal's citizens. They were overjoyed, knowing this meant a new king was coming since their current ruler was cruel. When the king heard the drumming, he angrily sent soldiers to find the source. The witch panicked too, yelling, It's not time yet. She rushed home to protect Tutul Shu, but arrived to find the soldiers had already taken him to the king. The king laughed at seeing the dwarf mocking the prophecy. He challenged Tutul Shu to complete two tasks to earn the kingdom. The witch encouraged her son, saying, Calm down, the gods are on your side. First, the king demanded Tutul Shu build an enormous monument to the rain god Chak in just one night. At home, Tutul Shu and the witch summoned the sprite-like guardians of the jungle called Alushas to help. Together, they completed the monument by morning. Next, the furious king challenged Tutul Shu to break 100 coconuts on his head. Again at home, the witch made her son a turtle shell helmet. The next day, Tutul Shu withstood 99 blows from the king's strongest warrior. On the 100th coconut, Tutul Shu turned and offered to break it on the king's head instead, with the kingdom as his prize for surviving. The angry citizens yelled for the king to accept the final challenge. With no choice, the king reluctantly knelt and was struck down. Tutul Shu became the new, righteous king of Ushmal, bringing peace and prosperity through his wisdom. Quotes about these myths come from early Spanish colonizers like Friar Diego de Landa, who wrote in 1566 that local people described impressive structures at Uxmal rising out of the ground overnight by magic art. De Landa also recorded tales of a female sorceress named Shtabai, who by her witchcraft could make the most extraordinary things, including raising masonry into incredible buildings. While local legends add colorful mythic elements, archaeologists and anthropologists largely agree Ushmal was one of the major late classic period urban centers of the Puk Maya region, dominated by the Shu dynasty of rulers. Its heyday was between 700 and 1000 CE. The city's architecture and iconography reflect the Shu elite's desire to self-aggrandize and consolidate religious political power. The Pyramid of the Magician, also called the Pyramid of the Dwarf, is a key example. At 115 feet tall, with an intricate oval-shaped temple at the top, it dominates Ushmal's central plaza. Carved serpent motifs wind down the east facade, 
likely representing the Maya vision serpent symbolizing rulers' access to sacred knowledge. As archaeologist Nikolai Gruber notes, the Xiu linked themselves with ancestral supernatural forces to enhance their authority via such symbols. So while folk tales spin fanciful stories, scholars see Mayan cities like Ushmal arising from complex socio-political dynamics, not magical miracles. As Mayanist scholar Prudence Rice summarizes, the urban landscape was theater for enacting the ruler's relationship with the supernatural, expressed via monumental architecture and iconography. Recent LIDAR surveys of Ushmal and the broader Puk region have revealed an extensive network of ancient roadways, terraces, and smaller settlements connected to these Mayan cities. This supports the view that Ushmal was the central hub of a powerful Xiu dynasty state. National Geographic archaeologist Thomas Garrison describes Ushmal as the capital of a discerning regional kingdom by around 800 to 900 CE. Ongoing excavations also uncover more details about Ushmal's rulers. In 2021, archaeologists announced the discovery of a lavish 50-room palace complex directly south of the Pyramid of the Magician. The quality and scale indicates the Xu nobles' self-aggrandizing propaganda also extended into their personal luxury estates, drawing on extensive regional resources and labor pools. Analyses of murals, ceramics, and architectural patterns show the Xu intentionally invoked older Southern Lowlands Maya styles to elevate their status. As Yale anthropologist Mary Miller concludes from settlement pattern studies, through commissioning these kinds of ancient styles, the Xu attach themselves to sacred landscapes and long histories. Tales of the city's mythical origins from gods or wizardry remain folk beliefs without factual basis. However, as cultural anthropologist Robert Warchope notes, such legends create revealing parallels with contemporary social processes, serving political purposes for ruling elites like the Xu, while providing symbolic meaning for common people amidst periods of societal stress and change. Though untrue as literal histories, Motifs like dwarf sorcerers raising pyramids fit what Mayanists call charter myths, etiological stories encoding metaphors for complexity in the human condition, as Rice University's David Stewart describes. Figures like the apocryphal dwarf builder Tutul Shu represent underlying social tensions while empowering rulers. Other elements echo archetypes from Mayan cosmology lending them cultural resonance. So while archaeological evidence clearly disputes fanciful pseudo-histories of a magical or miraculous founding, Ushmal's folklore constitutes what Tulane University folklorist Amanda Minet terms hidden transcripts articulating unspoken power dynamics through symbolic, dramatic narrative, factually false perhaps but psychologically insightful on social identities, tensions and meanings. While providing vital factual corrections to fanciful myths, the archaeological view of Mayan cities as elite propaganda tools glosses over their deeper cultural and spiritual meanings for common people. Tulane anthropologist E. Willis Andrews notes, scholars often stress political machinations while ignoring how the masses experience symbolic landscapes. Reducing monumental facades, iconography and folk tales solely to political branding overlooks complex social negotiations and meaning-making around place, history and identity. As UC San Diego ethnographer Jeffrey Himpel argues, Maya cities like Ushmal were embodiments of cultural ideals beyond just elite posturing. Local identities and beliefs imbued them with significance. Over-relying on external stylistic influences for Ushmal's rise also downplays local agency and innovation by commoner class artisans, who penned inscriptions glorifying patrons but subtly inserting their own voices into decorative programs as Vanderbilt scholar Stephen Houston has shown. So while providing invaluable factual corrections, aspects of mainstream analyses still tend toward elite-centric materialist interpretations stripped of cultural nuance and semiotic complexity, overlooking spiritual dimensions, commoner perspectives and complex negotiations of meaning in lived symbolic spaces. Who owns the past? Does it belong solely to kings or also to common people? Mayan sites like Ushmal reveal complex negotiations across social classes over cultural meaning, identity, and the power to shape memory. If we move past political branding models, folk beliefs dismissively termed nonsense mythology by early scholars, 
take on new light as social critiques encoding tensions of voice and legitimacy. The fantastical tale whispers what the powerless cannot openly declare. Behind the mask of magic spins a discourse on injustice. So an expansive, progressive archaeology must dig deeper than surface-level politics or architecture to reconstruct ancient life worlds, intricately bound to land, ancestry and meaning. The past persists as invention and reinvention, selective remembering and forgetting of truths according to social power. But cracks still surface if we learn how to listen. Who does history privilege? Can subjugated voices ever reshape dominant narratives? What protocols, partnerships and perspectives are needed to steward the past more equitably? As we interrogate the stories civilizations tell about themselves, our quest becomes less about factual accuracy than pursuing empathy across ages to hear silenced voices, rendering visible those made invisible, uncovering untold complexity. Thanks for watching until the end. If you like this expose of the story of Ushmal, make sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment below. Click on this next video for more fascinating insights into ancient sites.